Hi, fourth graders. Welcome back to another week of read alouds. We are going to be reading George versus George, the American Revolution as seen from both sides. We're going to start with our first chapter, At First Glance. The year was 1763, and in many ways, George Washington of America and King George III of Great Britain were very much alike. Both men had light blue eyes and reddish brown hair. Athletic and dignified in appearance, each stood well over six feet tall, towering above most other men during a time where the average height was 5'7". Both were honest and popular with the public. To give you an idea about height, um, it's Miss Day here, and I'm about 5'9", so I was a I'm a little bit taller than 5'7", so both George Washington and King George III would be taller than me. Both were honest and popular with the public. They liked simple food and much preferred plain clothes to the high fashion outfits of the period decorated with lace, ruffles, and embroidery. George III was sometimes called Farmer George because of his lifelong interest in agriculture. That means in land and farming. George Washington was a farmer who was happiest when working on his land. Both were excellent horsemen and loved hunting. George III believed that a king should rule America. For a long time, George Washington thought, thought so too. He had even fought bravely alongside the British Army. So right now I want you to jot down what were the similarities between King George III of Great Britain and George Washington of America. You can also pause the screen and read the captions for the pictures below. The people of Great Britain and the people from Britain's American colonies had a lot in common too. Most everyone on both sides of the ocean liked their good-natured, young, patriot king. English was their main language. After all, 60% of the colonists had British ancestors. London was everybody's capital city, and many Americans proudly thought of England as their home. Great Britain had just won the Seven Years' War, which involved almost every country in Europe and extended all the way to India and Australia. King George was now the ruler of the world's greatest empire. As loyal citizens of Great Britain, colonial soldiers had joined forces with soldiers from England to fight against France for control of North America. When France gave up its territories, jubilant celebrations were held throughout both England and America. Who could imagine what the fabric binding America to Great Britain was about to unravel, or that the two Georges were about to become bitter enemies? Who could guess that George III would be the last king of America, and that George Washington would one day become its first president? Neither George Washington nor King George III was fully responsible for everything that happened next. Many other thinkers, soldiers, and politicians helped to shape the future. Even so, as leaders of the two sides, these two Georges were to become the strongest symbols of their countries during the next 20 years. The different ideas they stood for would soon turn the whole world upside down. A look at the life of George Washington and his countrymen. George Washington was married to a wealthy widow named Martha Custis. Tiny, outgoing, and plump, Martha was a charming hostess. More than 2,000 guests visited their Mount Vernon home in the years before 1775. Martha had two young children from her previous marriage, and Washington adored them. Their home in Mount Vernon isn't far from D.C. It's down south a little bit in Virginia. The couple enlarged Mount Vernon into an enormous self-contained community. Washington grew tobacco and then switched to wheat. Besides raising mules, sheep, hogs, and prize bulls, he also bred horses and foxhounds, netted tons of fish, and grew such things as wild grapes, Indian corn, oats, clover, flax, hemp, and nuts, apple, pear, apricot, and cherry trees. He even grew orange trees and spent the winter in his greenhouse. Gardens, shoemakers, blacksmiths, 
weavers, foremen, and sometimes Washington's nieces and nephews all lived on the estate. Like all other plantation owners at the time, Washington was a slave owner. By 1775, he owned 135 people. We know now that slavery is wrong. George Washington participated in slavery and had over 130 slaves. About 90% of the colonists in America lived out in the country, where new arrivals from Europe were amazed to find farmland, forest, fish, and game as far as the eye could see. So much fertile territory made it possible to supply Great Britain with raw goods, such as furs, flour, iron, tobacco, and lumber in return for manufactured goods, including cloth, shoes, furniture, and tea from Great Britain. So the American colonists would be making things on their farms and sending them to Great Britain. In return, Great Britain would send them all sorts of goods, like the cloth, shoes, furniture, and tea. In small, bustling port cities such as Philadelphia, New York, Boston, and Charleston, whaling and shipbuilding were already major industries, and there were lumber mills, flour mills, factories, firehouses, and colleges. Streets, some paved most full of mud or dust, overflowed with ox carts, horses and carriages, chimney sweeps, sailors, and carriers of wood. In local taverns, young girls danced lively jigs with their boyfriends. The most well-off, best-educated people were usually planters like George Washington, merchant, doctors, ministers, or lawyers. Next came a very large middle class that included small farmers, shoekeepers, teachers, craftsmen, and fishermen. The poorest were unskilled laborers. That means people who didn't have a trade or a skill that they could use for a job. Indentured servants, and of course, black slaves from Africa who were bought, sold, and held in bondage in all 13 of the colonies. Many colonists wanted to settle the new territory they had helped to win during the Seven Years' War, but Great Britain made it illegal. That means it was not allowed. London thought it was fairest and safest to reserve these lands for the Native Americans who had always lived and hunted there. George Washington agreed with plenty of other colonial settlers who thought the law unfairly limited their rights. They poured into the West anyway. So the American colonists wanted to explore out West. However, Britain wanted them to stay where they were so that the Indians could stay in their native land. How government worked in England. The British government was a constitutional monarchy, which was a fancy way of saying that King George did not have all the power. He and a governing body called Parliament worked together to rule the empire. Young King George tried hard, and with much success, to see that Parliament's decisions agreed with his point of view. Even so, he had some very strong opponents, and it was Parliament that made laws and controlled the pursue and controlled the purse strings. Here's the king, King George III, and here's the British Parliament. That's the government. The government was made up of two different groups, the House of Lords and the House of Commons. And then here are the voters at the bottom who helped make the decisions. The 13 American colony colonies were not yet united into a single country. Each separate colony was under the crown's control, and each had its own governor and a governing body which made laws and imposed taxes. Some people who served in the government were elected by colonists. For example, George Washington was an elected member of the Virginia House of Burgesses, the lower house. For years, England had looked the other way when colonists ignored British laws they didn't like. So they had 13 governors that were responsible for all the different colonies. Hopefully here, the voters in the American colonies would be able to help make decisions that would control them. But as we know, this didn't work out well because the American Revolutionary War is coming where they wanted complete independence from the British Parliament, not to be under it. Tomorrow we're going to keep reading The Trouble with Taxes. You should have jotted down 
or you should be thinking about, what did King George III have in common with George Washington? Come back tomorrow so we can read The Trouble with Taxes. Bye!